My aha moment with respect to animal sentience was when I was about three years old. My parents tell me that I began asking them what were particular animals thinking and feeling, dogs or cats or even birds. So it just, something struck me when I was a young kid that there was a lot going on. And back then, I mean, no one was really asking those questions at all. My aha moment grew radically. <laughs> I mean, it really did. So by the time I was, you know, eight or 10 years old, I was always asking them, you know, about animal feelings, animal emotions. And in high school, there was a combination of events. I, I never wanted to dissect animals, and I'd never dissected animals in college. And then I ultimately went to um, a PhD MD program at a medical school, and I quit because I didn't want to cut up animals. So I, I just knew there was a lot more going on between their ears than people gave them credit for. The three most important changes I would like to see, but I would probably edit them. Um, well, the first, I would like the world to be vegan. I really think that very few people have to eat animals or animal products. So if, in my dream world, the world would be vegan. The second would be there would be no more invasive research on animals. We could really learn a lot about human disease and other maladies, if you will, without using animals. And I guess the third would be no more war because I really associate the abuse of animals with the abuse of other humans. So those would be among the three that I would uh, pick right now. I think the most important thing we can do to bring about change for animals and, and, make pe and, and have people respond more positively would be to set examples. Um, I'm, I'm all for being compassionate, not only to animals and to people with whom I agree, but compassionate to people with whom I disagree. So I think we need to be proactively compassionate and we need to set an example. And we need to have people who, who want to care about animals but uh, don't know what to do. We need to show them the way, just model our behavior, um, let, let, let them model our behavior, and especially work with children that, you know, not have them make excuses that they're sentimental. Um, as a scientist, I see in science education, people will say, well, you can't be sentimental and be a scientist. Well, of course you can, but th th that's what I would do. I think that that inborn attraction to animals and nature, you know, we call it biophilia. Um, I think we lose it, or people lose it, sort of in the rush of life. Um, all of a sudden, certain things become more important and being nice to animals in the environment becomes less important. But I would imagine a world where being nice to animals and being nice to the environment would mean we'd be nice to human animals and it would be a more peaceful world. But I think it just sort of goes away because it, people don't focus on it. And I think we need to bring it back to education, you know, educational systems. I'm so happy to be here in Sydney <laughs> at the Voiceless event. I mean, I think the work that Voiceless does is the model for what we need to do. And you just have to put it out there nicely and hope that people really realize the dire situation we're in right now, that we suffer the indignities to which we expose other animals.